Well, hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to talk about placing a one inch by one inch grid over any photo. It might sound kind of like what? But it's actually a really cool trick to know how to do and it'll teach you a little bit about kind of some of these techniques we're doing and resolutions and inches and rulers and different things like that. I think you'll really like it if you stick around and check it out. And if you do stick around and check it out, well, make sure you also subscribe to my channel so you never miss any video tutorials in the past, present, or future. We try to do it up right around here. Uh, with that out of the way, guys, let's jump into this video right now. Alrighty, as usual, we find ourselves in Photoshop, and the goal here, of course, is to create a one inch by one inch grid that can work over any image uh, that we have. Now, the first thing I do is I like to use my crop tool. Now, what we're going to do in the crop tool is we're going to we're going to crop this to a 24 inch by 18 inch image. That's what we're working with. But again, this is going to work with any size image, and you're going to see why. But just hang with me here. Uh, let's go with W by X by resolution, so width by height by resolution. And I'm going to say, hey, look at that. You can see that 24 inch by 18 inch, and I'm doing this at 300 PPI. This number is the important number. You can choose anything you want. You can go 72, you could go 150, 300. I'm going with 300. It can be anything you want, but whatever number you put in here, just make note of it uh, because it's going to be what we want to use later on in this tutorial. So I could crop the photo down. Now, of course, maybe you don't want to crop your photo. I'll show you how to, to remedy that in a moment, but just hang with me here. This keeps things nice and clean and simple. Uh, so I'm going to crop my photo down. I'm going to choose, yep, let's go ahead and crop the photo to this. Great. And I can real quick take a peek. Image, image size. I can see, yeah, there we go. We got a 300 resolution image. Uh, the pixel width and height really don't matter. If I switch it over to inches, we can see it is a 24 by 18 at a resolution of 300. That's the most important thing. I'm going to hit OK. Now check this out. I can go view. I can turn on my rulers. And my rulers are set to inches, but maybe yours aren't. You can right click on the rulers and change them from probably the default pixel to inches. Now look at this. Up here in the top left corner, zero. All the way over here, 24 inches. So that's pretty cool. But check this out. We can go view and choose a new guy to lay out. And what I've done is I have created a 24 column grid layout. Well, let me turn columns back on. 24 column grid layout instead of like 15. You can see that doesn't do what we want. But if I set this to 24 columns, knowing that they're 24 inches, look at this. Every grid line lines up with one inch, two inch, three, four, all the way up to 24. And the same thing for the rows because it's 18 inches high. I did 18 rows and we've got a grid there and all the way down to 18. Of course, each of these grids is one inch. It's a one by one inch square. Now, of course, the problem is, and you may be saying this already, if I save this file out, the grid doesn't save with a JPEG file. If I go and print this file, the grid doesn't come with it. So what do you want me to do? Take the pen tool or the stinking line tool and draw all these lines for every image? Ah, my friend, no. This is actually just to give you an example. We're going to use the hotkey Command or Control R to hide our rulers, and then Command or Control and the semicolon key to just hide the grid, because we really don't need them. Here's where the trick is. We're going to go File New and create a new document. This is where that little 300 PPI number comes into play. And if you decided to go with the resolution of 150, you want to make sure you set your resolution of this new document to 150 instead of 300. And then I'm going to go with the width of 1 and a height of 1. Of course, we're measuring by inches here. So 1 inch by 1 inch square, 300 pixel per inch uh, resolution. Create that. All right, great. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. And now the first thing we're going to do here is, well, we conveniently have our rectangle tool. So I'm going to click a single time. And I'm going to say, look, make the width one inch and then make the height five pixels. So you can punch in just varying units of measure. So we're going one inch by five pixels. Hit OK. We can't see anything. And that's because our fill is set to white. And maybe if you want a white grid, you can set the fill to white. I want my grid to be black. So I'm going to select that and I'm just going to sample one of the black colors. There we go. Then I'm going to come and grab my move tool. And I am going to go select and choose select all. It's going to load this selection around my entire document. And really, it's going to activate my alignment options here. So I can align based on the selection. I'm going to send my rectangle down to the bottom. And then I'm going to align to the well, that vertical centers there, or horizontal centers. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, we're aligning it horizontally, of course. And then we'll go select and just deselect this. So there we go. We have our first line there at the bottom. Now, we need to duplicate this layer. Hotkey, Command, or Control J. We have two rectangles. Great. We're next going to go edit, free transform. And I'm going to hold down my shift key. And you can see I got this twist to roo arrow. Hold down my shift key and just rotate until you're straight up and down with this line. And commit that change. Of course, it's not aligned. So once more, we go select, select all. And then use our alignment options. We're going to align to the right-hand side. And then align to the vertical centers just like that. And then select, deselect. So now we have this kind of thick black L. Problem is now we still have the white fill. Well, that's easy enough to get rid of. We can select the background layer, just hit the little lock icon, drag it down to the garbage can, boom. We now have this, this double black line over a transparent background. Let's just hold down Shift and select both layers in our Layers panel and hit Command or Control E. That's going to merge them together. And then we can go Edit 
we can choose define pattern. And here, this is where you can, whatever naming convention you like, you can name your a grid. Maybe you need one inch grids, maybe you need half inch grids, maybe you need two inch grids. So I'm gonna say one by one inch at 300 PPI. So that tells me everything I need to know about this grid. It's gonna be a one inch by one inch square at 300 PPI. So I'll go ahead and hit okay. And we're actually done with that, but we'll, we'll mess around with it maybe a little later. Now what we need to do is in this image, really it can be any image that's at 300 PPI, we can simply go layer, new fill layer and choose pattern. You can also get to this down here in the half white, half black circle and just choose the pattern fill layer. And of course, choose our newest little pattern there and hit OK. And you can see we have this black grid that perfectly aligns. If we turn our grid lines back on command or control in the semicolon, you can see our grid lines align perfectly with that inch by inch grid, therefore giving us a perfect inch by inch grid overlay, which would actually travel with the photo. Now, if you're in a rush and you didn't want to create a white grid for whatever reason, kind of a cool little trick, you can add a hue saturation adjustment layer, use the command option G, that'll be control alt G hotkey to clip hue saturation to that layer and just boost lightness all the way up and you'll get a white grid like that. Just kind of a little hack if you don't feel like making a white grid. And also, like I said, let me just close this image I'm not going to save this. What if we don't want to crop the image to 18 by 24? I can also close this pattern. I don't need that anymore. Let's uh, let's just choose that image again, but this time we won't crop it at all. We want this thing in its full glory. Well, you still want to make sure that it is 300 PPI, and probably the easiest way to do it is, again, just use your crop tool. But what I'll do here is I'll say, look, clear all this junk, and then I'm going to hit escape, and it's going to reset my crop just like that. And here I'm going to specify 300 pixels per inch, and I'm not going to change the width or height. I'm going to commit the change, and now we can go image, we can go image size, and we can see that we have a 300, uh, 300 pixel per inch resolution image, but note the inches, it's 19.2 by 12.8, so it's not gonna be a grid that aligns perfectly with the edges, but it will still be proper one inch by one inch squares. So we're going to go ahead and open up, add a pattern layer above this, so there we go, we hit okay, and now this should be 19 squares across, plus, as you can see, a little sliver of a square, that's the 0.2. And this really works with any image. You can throw it onto a portrait, you could throw it onto a square image, whatever. As long as you set that uh, pixel per inch to 300, you will be good to go. It's really quite simple to do. So there you go, that's it. Like I said, pretty simple when you boil it all down. Uh, maybe you don't need to create a one inch by one inch grid very often, but there are many ways to skin a cat and many ways to use pretty much every single tool and feature and function in Photoshop. So hopefully you find some uses for some of the stuff you learned here today. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, again, let me just remind you, subscribe to my channel so you never miss any Photoshop tutorials in uh, the future. Also, we have a little Discord chat group. If you're into Discord, you can check that out. URL will be popping up in the screen. Uh, and there's also a URL right down there in the chat as well. And what am I forgetting here? Oh, if you uh, are into Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash tutvid. That means my handle is just at tutvid. I try to do a live stream just about every day over there. We have a lot of fun over there on Instagram. So I hope to see you around. And for creating grids and guides and using patterns and pattern fill layers and all the different stuff we covered in this very tutorial right here and right now, guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.